and welcome back to another highly educational episode of Your Edge. I haven't done one of these in a while, but contrary to popular belief, I do read the comments, and a lot of you guys have been asking for more Your Edge videos. And specifically, I've seen a lot of requests on how to use this thing, the Waterfall Platinum. And there's a handful of questions that I'm going to try my best to answer today in this video. First, what is a Waterfall Platinum? What is this thing? Second, why you should be using it? And third, of course, how to use it. This is your edge. To start things off, I want to be honest with you guys. When I first saw Waterfall Platins being used, I wasn't a big fan. If you guys have followed me for a long time, you know that I really pride myself on freehand grinding, and I believe that the least amount of jigs and machining that you can do on a knife, the better. It gives it a more organic feel, and it just shows the hand craftsmanship of knife making. So when I first saw the Waterfall Plat, and I believe it was on Kyle Royer's channel, I literally said these words, oh man, that's cheating. But once I used a Waterfall Platin for the first time, everything changed. You see, I had a bit of the old man syndrome, or as I like to call it, they took our job. syndrome. You see, I felt like it was taking away from the hand sanding portion that I felt really changed a mechanical looking plunge into a handmade plunge. But what I didn't realize before I used one is what it's actually doing is the basically the same thing. It's just saving you a little time and it's adding a little bit more of a freehand grind experience. You're still gonna be doing plenty of hand sanding to get a really nice knife, trust me about that. But instead of just relying on, say, a plunge guide or a file guide to do your plunge line, you're then going in and freehand grinding on the top of the waterfall and creating a radius, a very slight radius in there instead of a really distinct notch. And when you do that, you have to do it by eye. You kind of have to do it by feel. Um, I'm sure there's some jigs that people have made to do it by now, but the way I use it is all by hand. So it actually added a handmade nature to the plunge line of my knives immediately. And it changed my mind right away. All right, so now that we've established how I feel about waterfall platens and how I initially felt about them, what is exactly a waterfall platen? Let's take the belt off and take a look. So the main key difference of a waterfall platen and a regular platen is the platen's up top here, right? Normally your platen would be down here when you do your initial blade grind, but now it's mounted up here. Now, you should know by now, that I use Brawlback Ironworks grinders. This is their new waterfall attachment. I actually haven't used this yet. I just got it in the mail. I had kind of made my own. You can do the same, whatever grinder you have, but this is a really nice setup that's good to go right out of the box. Now the key feature is this radius right here. This is an eighth inch. On the other side, they have a quarter inch. So you can use eighth or quarter. I actually, the one I made, uh, mine was a little bit closer to a sixteenth probably. So what this does is it gets in on your plunge, it turns that basically square notch into a slight radius, and because your belt is running this way towards you, you're able to get right up in that groove, turn it into a slight radius, and while you do it, you're actually removing all your grind lines up by that plunge that are going this way and you're turning them into linear down the blade grind lines. So you are saving yourself a little bit on the hand sanding but in general you're still going to do a lot of hand sanding to get that nice satin finish. So to be honest I haven't really done a lot of research to see how everyone makes use of the waterfall platen. I just know how I do it and how I do it is I do not use it as a workhorse. Your workhorse is still this platen, the one that mounts this way, right? You're gonna grind your knives just the same way you always have with the same plunge line, using a file guide if you want or not. It actually matters a whole lot less now that you're gonna be finishing your plunge lines with the waterfall, whether or not you use that file guide because if your lines are slightly off from side to side, you're gonna be able to true all of that up right here on this guy and that's the real magic is it makes your plunge lines not only slightly radius, but let you feather them in from side to side really take your time and get those things nice and even from side to side and it's it's a real game changer now for me 
What I do is I use the regular platen and I run my grits all the way up from 36, 60, 80, 120, 220, 320, all the way to 400. And I don't touch this waterfall platen until it hits 400 grit. Some people might do it earlier. I don't think you need to. I run my grinder, my Brawlback Ironwork grinder, at a very, very low speed, and I use a slightly worn 400 grit belt. And the reason I use a slightly worn is I don't want to take off too much material. I want to really take my time and feather that radius into the plunge line uh, nice and slow. Uh, if you feel more comfortable doing it on a 220 or even a 120, go for it. I just feel like you're asking for a disaster if you take off stuff too much material too fast. So I use a worn 400 and just take my time, and it just works. When I first used one, I used it right on my very first JS knife for the first time. I was so nervous. But honestly, guys, if you take your time, these things just work. And the other really nice advantage of using this to finish off your plunge lines is that when you use your regular platen to grind in your plunge, you can move it a little forward than you are going to end up wanting it. What you're going to do is not set that file guide exactly where you want that plunge line to lead. You're going to want to push it just slightly up towards the tip so that you're using this to not only create a radius, but actually move that plunge line back into the place where you want it. You should be able to hit a target exactly how you want it, going nice and slow, using this, and it truly does make your knives perfect. You should be able to hit that plunge line goal that you have every time. All right, let's put a belt back on and kind of show how I run it. I like to turn my grinder on at zero speed, slowly turn it up. And that's about where I use it. On my motor, it's about a 30. I don't know what 30% of this all adds up to be, but it's a 30%. The track's right in the middle. Once again, all your, your belt is running this way. So it's going to be grinding into your plunge. Now before I start demonstrating on how exactly I use this and how you should use it, let me show you an example of a knife that I made recently where I finished it with a waterfall platen. Now as you can see, this knife still has a very crisp plunge. Nothing gets washed out. Still looks like a nice sharp angle, but it's actually a very slight radius. This isn't anything fancy. This is just the everyday kind of camp hunting knife, but I was able to make it very, very fast in comparison to sitting there hand sanding out a plunge line using a waterfall platen. And I really think it's going to change your life when you start using one of these, whether you're scared, can't afford one, just don't like the idea. Once you give it a try, I think it's going to really not only up your game, get your plunge lines this way, dead smack on, as long as your eyeballs are working well, you should be able to get them smack on where you want them. And it just gives a much more organic and handmade feel over that real sharp plunge line that actually sometimes catches moisture. You see sometimes there's little rust spots in there. There's a lot of different advantages to having a slight radius, but really the cleanup time that you save and the handmade uh, skills that you start learning by using this by hand pay off in the long run. I should note, this knife is available on thatworks.shop. Just saying. Now here is a rough forge knife blank. Now, it looks like Ilya at some point was doing a slight hollow grind on it. I'm going to go ahead and get this blade up to snuff with a regular platen so then I can move on to show you how we finish it off on the good old waterfall. One thing to note, you'll see that this plunge line ends just slightly short of where we want it to end. So when I do all of my regular platen work, I'm not even going to touch this end. I'm going to be up here and then we're going to push that line just slightly back and create a nice little radius. Now I do all of my rough grinding early on with a pair of gloves on. It allows me to use my hands instead of using jigs and add more pressure and really hard material. I see people complaining, well, tough. One thing that's worth pointing out that's a little bit off topic, 
but most certainly worth mentioning is that while grinding your knives, one of the most common mistakes I see is people pushing this plunge line up past the actual spine of the blade. And that creates a, an, a step, a distinct step from your ricasso area to the actual blade of the knife. I highly recommend leaving about what I did, even if you intend on going almost all the way to the top, leave about this much in your initial grind. That way as you go through the grits, you can push that line up and then you can finish it on the waterfall platform. Okay, so here we Okay, so here's our blade ready for the waterfall platen. 400 grit up here at the actual plunge going this way, 400 grit going down this way on the rest. We did that all right here on the contact wheel. If you want to do it by hand sanding and you're more comfortable with that, by all means, go ahead and do that. But I like to have as much of this grit going linear down the blade as possible so you can see this spot right in here start changing when we go to the waterfall. That said, let's get to the whole point of this video, and that is how to use the waterfall platen. Now for this demonstration, I'm going to use the eighth inch radius side of the Broadbeck Ironworks waterfall platen. Start off with a Warren 400, so we're going to use that belt again. Some people like this completely flat. Some people prefer it at a little bit of an angle. I'm not sure which is best. I'm gonna start, since I've never even used this one, I'm gonna start with a little bit of an angle with a worn 400. Now if you do get the Broadbex ironwork set up, you're gonna wanna make sure that you have a Mareco platen. The Mareco platen is how this attachment works. If you had the old style uh, platen, there's not enough depth in there between the wheel and where the platen bolts so you're gonna have to go ahead and get yourself the Mareco platen as well. Have it running nice and slow. And I'm literally just gonna place the blade on top and try to keep the angle of the actual blade nice and steady. So I start off up here, and I work myself to that plunge, and I put a little bit of pressure, dig in that radius right here. Now one thing to note as I'm doing this, right here, this finger, I'm twisting. So I'm applying pressure for the blade, for the actual edge side down. I'm twisting it a little like this as I'm doing it, and I'm using this hand to put pressure downwards. You can see I'm starting to get a nice radius up here towards the spine. I'm going to slowly work my way down towards the edge, and then I can start pulling the whole radius downwards until it meets the other side. I like to go back and forth a little bit. See how this radius is starting to come out towards this edge slowly.
Once again, take note, you can see my left hand, which is the one with the ring on it, is putting downwards pressure on the actual bevel of the blade, making sure that the blade doesn't rotate on me, grinding too much into the spine. It's important to note that you don't want to push the tip down into this or it'll flip back on you. You want to be pushing about in the middle of the blade with this hand, right? Middle of the blade, you don't want to force that tip down into the belt and just slowly work it back and forth. So, on this side, I'm already getting pretty close to my spine, so now I'm going to really focus on just working down in here. Constantly checking to make sure you don't push it too far. But I got a lot to go on this side. You might want to be doing this process wet. And what wet means is literally either putting some water or coolant on your belt as it's running. If you don't have good habits like me of quenching your blade every couple of seconds, not only will keeping your belt wet, keep the temperature of your blade down, but it also removes a lot of this gunk that will happen to clog your belt up. If you don't want to just do it manually, Broadback Ironworks does sell a really nice mister setup that you just hook up to an air compressor, put this little end right here into a coolant water, and it will just sit here and spray. And it's very nice to use. I just got mine. Haven't hooked it up yet, but I certainly will. Okay, let's take a look where we are right now. You can see my plunge lines are getting really close to the same. They're not quite there. We have a radius established on both sides. So now I'm just going back and forth and pushing these lines until they're exactly even. And if you're going for something like JS, you definitely want to make sure these are as perfect as possible. All right, folks, that is pretty much it. I mean, I've seen people go a lot further with the waterfall. From here, I prefer to do everything in the hand sanding. Get all the little ripples out that happen from working on a hard surface instead of a soft contact wheel. But that's it. We got our plunge lines nice and even. Got a really nice radius. Now, you'll see that I left the forged uh, scale finish on the flats and on the back. I didn't finish this knife out. For me, I like to finish all the surfaces out and do literally this last and then do the final hand sanding afterwards. So you would have your whole ricasso area, your tang, uh, the sides of the ricasso, your spine. You'd have literally everything. If you have a little bit of flat that you left on the blade that's not edge bevel, have all of that completely sanded out to basically your final finish. And then from there... Uh, move on to the waterfall. Well, that about does it for this year Edge video on how to use a waterfall platen. I hope you found some value out of this. It's kind of hard for me to teach how to use a grinding rig like this because it really is done by feel. The biggest thing to remember is to apply pressure with the tang hand, both pushing in and turning, and to use this hand as a rest to keep the bevel flat against the platen. If you'd like to help support me while I make educational videos like this, well, why don't you consider going to Brawlback Ironworks and getting yourself an attachment like this or any other attachment or even a grinder and use the promo code THATWORKS10 for 10% off. I also have a Patreon that's listed below, or you can just like, comment, and of course subscribe to this channel. And as a bonus, if you'd like to finish out the knife blade that I made today in this video, just comment below, I want that blade and I'll select a lucky viewer and send it to you for free. Thanks, and be sure to keep honing your edge.